Thank you very much and thank you to Aspire for inviting me to talk to you today about Piezo ICSI and whether this technology is better than our conventional micro-injection techniques. So let's start at the beginning with the introduction of IVF and ICSI. Obviously the first baby born from IVF was Louise Brown who was born in 1978 and her mother Leslie Brown had blocked fallopian tubes. Now, if you have blocked fallopian tubes and the issue is purely around the sperm being able to access the egg, it is of course understandable that IVF standard insemination can be highly successful. But what about for patients who have failed fertilization uh, via standard insemination? Or what about patients with severe male factor infertility? So this then led to trying to investigate and optimize gamete interactions. There were many mechanisms that were used to try and facilitate this interaction between the sperm and the egg, including partial zona dissection, creating a hole using things like acid thyroid solution, or inducing a hole or a slit mechanically within the, um, in the zona pellucida. However, all of these failed to work or did result in very high rates of polyspermy, so too many sperm entering the egg at once. It was actually an accident around um, the development of ICSI where a technician who was pe performing SUSI, who was trying to induce interaction between the olemna and the sperm, accidentally injected a sperm directly into the cytoplasm. And they noticed that whenever this accident happened, fertilization nearly always occurred. And therefore the first human pregnancy from ICSI or microinjection was actually an accident. And as serendipity and accidents um, often lead to innovation. This led to the steady increase in popularity for microinjection or intracytoplasmic sperm injection or ICSI throughout the 1990s. And of course, this technology was of critical importance for severe male factor infertility, especially those who only had occasional motile sperm in their ejaculate, testicular and epididymal sperm samples, uh, if eggs had been cryopreserved or had undergone IBM and there was zona hardening or that the cumulus had been removed for patients accessing single gene testing or PGTM, where we didn't want to minimise the risk of sperm contaminating the genetic sample, and of course, zero discordant couples. Now, although ICSI is a phenomenal technology, it is an invasive technology. It does require us putting a a pipette um, and um, a needle directly into an egg. And due to the fact that we do this and then have to uh, aspirate the cytoplasm, this can result in egg damage. And this is a graph that I'm sure many uh, scientific directors or heads of laboratories or clinicians have seen before, which is the statistics of ICSI from a laboratory on individual scientist basis. And you can see in the blue dots here is each scientist representing their fertilization rate via ICSI. And you can see we do get variance in that. So this is a technician, um, this, the technicians can influence the results of ICSI. And in the pink dots are our degeneration rates post ICSI. So you can see again that this is, is, can be influenced by the technician, but can be quite high and in some instances can get up to around 20%. So we do know that, that although a fantastic technology, it does have uh, some limitations. So this brings us to piezo. Now piezo ICSI has been used primarily or was originally created and used in the research and animal industry due to the fragile nature of, of animal oocytes such as mice. Piezo ICSI resulted in improved fertilization and survival rates compared to conventional ICSI because these eggs were so sensitive to being microinjected. And the way it does this is it uses a blunt ended micro pipette instead of that traditional beveled sharp spiked pipette that we used for ICSI. It does require the loading of an operation fluid into the pipette and traditionally and originally this was mercury uh, and then it had transitioned to something called fluorinert, which is an inert engineering fluid. And these need to be loaded into the pipette to give the pipette uh, inertial mass. The way piezo uh, ICSI works is that it uses a piezoelectric actuator to move the capillary forward in an ultra rapid fashion. And this produces ultra fast sub-micron motion, which propels the capillary in a forward fashion. 
It needs to be noted that this is not applying any form of electricity to the egg. This is often a, a misconception about piezoixy. It is actually just a micro drilling technique. The actuator itself is made of a material that when voltage is applied, it changes shape, it expands and contracts. And this excludes, uh, extrudes the force which moves the capillary in a forward micro jackhammer motion. Now I have a video here of how ICSI, of how piezo ICSI works. Now the first thing you'll notice here is that this pipette is blunt ended and looks a lot, um, is more similar to our um, trifectoderm biopsy pipettes. And what is happening here is that that pipette is actually micro drilling through the zona pellucida. You can't see that movement because it's so fast, but it's almost like a little hot knife through butter and it's drilling through. That pipette is then removed to expel that little bit of core of, this, of the zona pellucida that was retained. You go back in through the hole, bring the sperm obviously to the tip push into the cytoplasm, which is very similar to standard ICSI, but instead of aspirating, you apply one gentle little tap of piezo pulse, which is a gentle little jackhammer knock, and then that sperm is placed into the cytoplasm. So you can see there that with piezo, there is no cytoplasmic aspiration whatsoever compared to traditional uh, microinjection techniques. So in the human, the first published uh, trial of piezo ICSI in the human was in 1996. And this resulted in comparable results to conventional ICSI. However, they didn't actually uh, compare it directly to ICSI. It wasn't a trial comparing the two. They compared it to what was in the literature. They also didn't use our operation fluid, which we now know is really critical for piezo. And they also did use a hydraulic fluid to open and etch the piezo pipette, which may have had a negative impact on the eggs. A second study a couple of years later uh, used mercury as the operational fluid inside the pipette. So this would have improved the control of the piezo uh, technique and resulted in a statistical increase in ICSI survival rates or injection survival rates and fertilization rates with piezo compared to conventional ICSI and also increased pregnancy rates with this technology. Uh, a few years later, there was another study that came out that again was using piezo to compare it to conventional ICSI in patients with uh, male factor infertility or who had also had failed fertilization via IVF. And this also demonstrated significant improvements in patient outcome where not only did they have <clears throat> higher fertilization rates, and you can see here it was above, just above 90% fertilization, which is exceptional. They also had an increase in the percentage of embryos that, uh, that cleaved. Again, this study did use mercury as an operating fluid. And of course, there would be concerns in any lab about having a, a heavy metal and a, and a dangerous heavy metal like mercury within an embryology laboratory. So it's probably not surprising that it has taken a long time for the next study to come out, which was 14 years later which looked at piezo ICSI in human, but this time instead of using fluorinert, uh, mercury, they use fluorinert as an operating liquid. Now this is a totally inert liquid that is often used in engineering, um, in the engineering world. And this also has around 1.8 times the density of water. So it's a heavy fluid and it allows um, inertial mass, but obviously is a lot safer than mercury. This trial, um, which was undertaken by Dr. Hiroka uh, from Japan, also trialed two different diameter pipettes, a thin and a thick wall diameter pipette for piezo, and found very high survival rates post-injection of 99% survival, uh, significantly increased fertilization, and also had improvements in uh, embryo quality on day three, and clinical pregnancy um, rates and live birth rates when compared to conventional ICSI, which is obviously um, is, is very exciting results. So we um, at the Monash IVF group uh, decided to investigate the use of this technology ourselves. And uh, we undertook a trial of piezo ICSI within Australia with the hypothesis being that the use of piezo ICSI technology will increase fertilization rates and decrease oocyte degeneration rates compared to conventional ICSI. 
I undertook this trial uh, at a site in South Australia, in Australia called Repromed, and I did this in partnership with Vitrolife and PrimeTech, PrimeTech being the suppliers of the piezo device and also piezo pipettes. I was very fortunate to be able to um, gain training and advice from Dr. Haroka at the Kamida Ladies Clinic in Japan and also Prime Tech facilitated training. The novel aspect of this trial was that this was being undertaken in a clinic that had never accessed or tried piezo technology before, but we were also able to use a very unique operating liquid. And this liquid is mouse embryo assay tested and is an ultra purified medical grade perfluoroenoctane which is a medical device that's actually used in, in eye surgery, um, which was supplied by Vitrolife. We had 69 patients in each arm of this trial. It was a pros prospectively case matched for comparison trial. So 69 patients having piezo and 69 patients having um, conventional ICSI. And the inclusion criteria was that the clinician had recommended ICSI as the insemination method that the patient had greater than or equal to six mature oocytes, and we did exclude the use of surgical sperm and also if patients had had very poor fertilization on a previous ICSI cycle. This trial was approved by a human ethics committee, internal review board, and was also registered um, on our clinical trial da um, database in Australia. So the clinical trial results are currently, the manuscript is in preparation for publication, but these are some of the results that we have had in Australia with our clinical trial using piezo ICSI. You can see here the patient demographic groups, uh, which we also used in our statistical modeling. And we didn't find any significant difference in the majority of our patient demographic aspects, given that they were case matched. However, um, we did find that in the piezo ICSI group, there was a, an increase in maternal and paternal BMI in the piezo group compared to conventional ICSI. Um, but this was obviously not uh, of huge concern, this differential. We didn't believe that this would be, um, you know, of too great a concern in our outcomes, but all of these were used in our statistical modeling. Um, uh, and I can present the adjusted and unadjusted results. So we found that in piezo ICSI, that we had a significantly increased percentage of oocytes that fertilized and a significant decrease in the percentage of oocytes that degenerated and that were abnormally fertilized in conventional ICSI compared to, uh, in piezo ICSI compared to control. And this was of particular, we also did assess the um, two different maternal age brackets to see if we had maternal, uh, any benefit in one particular age group of patients or another. And we interestingly found that this benefit was of most significance in our patients aged less than 38 years um, for the degeneration and abnormally fertilized results. Uh, and in our patients aged greater than 38 years, we found an improvement, a statistical improvement in fertilization rates, but the degeneration and abnormal fertilization didn't reach statistical um, significance, despite the fact that there were improvements in those groups too, and this is likely due to a power issue. Interestingly, there has also been a study that came out last year um, looking at piezo ICSI versus conventional ICSI, and although they didn't find any difference in their overall uh, cohorts, when they were looking at women over the age of 35 years, they also found that for, they found that fertilization rates were significantly improved with piezo ICSI compared to conventional. And they also found higher rates of blastocyst development if piezo ICSI was used on women over the age of 38 compared to conventional ICSI. So it, it does stand that there, that there does seem to potentially be some age um, influences as well with this technology. In regards to what this means from our, from our embryology laboratory, if you have more high rates of fertilization and low rates of degeneration, it makes sense that you will have a larger cohort of embryos culturing in your laboratory for that patient. And we found that in, use, in our both adjusted and unadjusted model, that we had a significant increase in the percentage of embryos that were cryopreserved if patients had piezo ICSI and also the percentage of embryo utilization if patients had piezo ICSI compared to uh, conventional ICSI. 
And this was of particular, um, it was particularly evident in women over the age of 38. So very similar to that previous study that, that saw a benefit in patients over the age of 35. So what this equated to in our trial is that patients having piezo ICSI had on average an extra embryo vitrified compared to their conventional ICSI prospectively matched cohort. We did uh, assess uh, pregnancy outcomes for these, for these patients. A large proportion of our patients did undergo freeze all in this trial, but for those patients that underwent a, uh, that had a, an embryo, a fresh embryo transfer, we didn't find any difference in, in the um, positive HCG, percentage clinical pregnancy, percentage viable pregnancy, or percentage live delivery between piezo ICSI and conventional ICSI. Uh, we also had note that there were no um, baby abnormalities noted in either um, of this clinical trial. Again, this trial was not powered to look at pregnancy outcomes, but in the cohort that we have, these did seem to be quite matched. So what does this mean moving forward? So I think there are, obviously this technology does seem to have um, some very ex exciting prospects. But there are some things to consider regarding piezo ICSI um, when, when bringing this technology or considering bringing this technology into the lab. This does require additional equipment for your ICSI rig. You, you do need to have the piezo equipment attached to an ICSI rig. And it does require the precise loading of an operation fluid into an injection pipette. And there is a finesse in being able to do that. And we also, you know, we do need to ensure that that operating fluid is a very safe operating fluid, given that it does touch the media that the sperm is in. And that is why this study was of particular importance because we were using a fluid that we believe is, is does seem to be very biocompatible. Piezo ICSI is a more, um, it's a, a very delicate technology and it does increase the time required for the scientists to undertake the microinjection process. And there is a learning curve for laboratories to master this technology. So this is not a, a really simple and easy technology to bring in, but I think that the, that the outcomes are, do appear to be uh, are worthwhile bringing this technology into a laboratory. So the conclusions are, it does appear that this technology is less invasive. It does not require any cytoplasmic aspiration. And the studies that are out, and indeed in our own initial trial that we did, which was prospectively case matched and was not randomised controlled trial, did show increased fertilisation and also increased embryo numbers available per cycle in our trial. We do think that, there, that the greatest benefit is likely going to be in poor prognosis patients that have a lower egg numbers, lower ovarian reserve or advanced maternal age, but obviously more work does need to be done into which particular patients benefit from piezo ICSI. And there certainly may be some patients who do not benefit from piezo ICSI. And these may be patients that do require some cytoplasmic um, agitation to try and uh, uh, increase fertilisation rates. So certainly patients where clinics are offering things like double injection um, or cytoplasmic agitation would not benefit from a technology that is actually more gentle um, in, in the way it injects the sperm. We're actually currently undertaking a phase two clinical trial, uh, which is a multi-centre sibling split clinical trial, which is a strengthened trial design as our next phase to see how if we can get similar results from that. But I think there are further studies warranted to investigate whether piezo also may result in increased